Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us on our part three of our webinar series. We're going to be talking about negotiation skills today. We've had great feedback, and most of you have told us the first webinar about the 2018 HR pitfalls was very well received and helpful and beneficial for your practices and your businesses. And then the second one on Medicare 101, same thing. We had great feedback and hopefully you're enjoying these quick webinars. We've intentionally kept them to a quick, about 25 minutes so that you're learning something and then moving on with all of our busy days. We'll be doing the same thing here today. I'm gonna to give about another minute for a few more folks that are joining us. And then we will get started talking about negotiation skills. It's actually a topic I'm asked to speak on with some frequency because obviously as an insurance broker, that's part of what we do here at Presidio and that's negotiate insurance contracts, the middleman between the carrier and our clients and we negotiate terms and prices and contracts. And so after about 20 years of doing this, I get asked with some frequency to talk about this. And we all really do negotiate daily in our lives and uh, this is a presentation that normally I do for about an hour and I'm condensing it here to 30 minutes so I'm going to get started here. That's me, Gisela. All right, let's start by defining exactly what negotiation is. Uh, I think this is an area that can get a little confusing and so I went ahead and used a blend of Wikipedia definitions and a few others and said let's boil it down to it's a discussion that's aimed at reaching an agreement. And obviously the most important parts there are discussion and agreement. And we're all negotiating all the time. Uh, parents, spouses, partners, employees, employers, uh, we do this all the time. Uh, recently, a few months back, I was asked to do a full presentation at a corporate level about negotiation. And so in, presentation, in preparation for that presentation, uh, Carrie here at our office gave us the suggestion that how about interviewing a hostage negotiator? They do that for a living. They should be able to share some skills that are helpful on this topic. And so that's what I did. Figure who knows better about negotiating than hostage negotiator, right? And so I did. I'm going to call her Jennifer, and that's uh, who I interviewed. She's part of the local SWAT team. And she gave me lots of great advice and actually was interesting the things she was sharing about how she does her job in negotiating with uh, the folks that she has to deal with whether it's somebody that's been barricaded or uh, they're jumping off the bridge whatever the case might be uh, some of the tactics that they use are what she shared with me and it was interesting how much those tactics mirror what we do in our everyday lives with our kids or what I do in my everyday life which is insurance contract negotiations um, so I'll refer back to Jennifer with some frequency here on some of the things she taught us. And uh, interestingly enough, when I've done this live uh, presentation in front of an audience, uh, the, sec the question that I get most often is, well, Gisela, tell us what the secret is when I want to win. Uh, and yes, there are certain strategies that are useful when you're going into a negotiation. Maybe you're trying to get a raise from your boss or what have you. There's definitely certain tactics and tips uh, and I'll share some here, but before I do, I want to be clear that when we're talking about negotiation, uh, it's a different goal than what you would think, what the objective of negotiations really are. Um, and that's that if it's successful, everybody walks away fairly satisfied, maybe not happy, but satisfied. Uh, a few years back, a real good friend of mine, Susie, gave me a book, and the book was about the art of negotiation. And it was taken from some ancient Greek philosophy. And prior to reading that book, I thought, probably like most of us do, that a successful negotiation means I got my way. I won. I bested my opponent. Uh, that's what my definition was of successfully negotiating. But as it turns out, after reading that book and doing a little bit more research on this old Greek philosophy, a successful negotiation actually means that everybody is understanding each other and they are coming to an agreement so that they walk away satisfied. That's the definition really of what a successful negotiation is. So uh, this presentation comes from that background, uh, not the 
the background of, hey, I want to win, uh, because that's really a whole different presentation, isn't it? Let's talk about the first thing in negotiation. And some of this is taken from my SWAT negotiator that I interviewed. One of the first things she said that they talk about uh, when they're doing their FBI training or when they're on scene is that they need to build rapport. And one of the very first things she does, one of the most important things she does in building rapport is active listening. Um, and of all the things she and I talked about, this might be the one that I think is the most challenging, which is why I'm highlighting it here today. And when I talk about active listening, what I mean is really focus on what's being said. Um, there's going to be verbal clues, there's uh, body language clues and what have you. But if you think about what you're doing in your everyday life when you're negotiating, and this could be you know, negotiating uh, with your spouse or with your kids or what have you, we're often so busy crafting what our rebuttal is going to be that we aren't actually listening anymore. And so what Jennifer was teaching me was in active listening, you're really trying to stay focused on what the person is saying, being in the moment, so to speak. We hear about that quite a bit, but staying in that moment to hear what they're actually saying and acknowledging it. Um, and one of the things to note here is if you're acknowledging by nodding or you're saying, uh-huh, Remember that listening isn't agreeing. It's just actively listening is focusing on what you're being told without being so concerned about what your rebuttal is going to be. Um, the other thing she told me is you want to show some concern when you're trying to build rapport. So we're going to work on our active listening to build rapport. And then you're going to show concern by asking questions. So say you're negotiating a raise at work, for example. Uh, then as you're building rapport, and hopefully you have some rapport already if it's, you're talking to a boss, but you might want to ask questions like, how was the company's performance last year? Right? That's a little different from just trying to get to the point of I want to raise. Instead, you're, you're trying to build a little bit of concern into the conversation. Um, and again, that's just a tip, to, but it still comes from that same place of you're trying to get to mutual agreement, right? Um, if it's a personal negotiation, for example, um, you can ask things like, what can I do better to understand your concerns? So if you're trying to get to an agreement, right, you're having a discussion to get to an agreement, um, then maybe one of the things you want to do is ask those concern questions and then also get to what is the agreement. Sometimes negotiations break down because my understanding of the agreement might be very different from somebody else's agreement. And you know, if I can get a couple of uh, notes here. I'm getting some messages coming in on the webinar that you can't hear very well. I don't know if the volume needs to be up or you're just not getting any audio. So if a few of you can send me through the chat board a message that says, yes, I hear you, uh, that would be helpful. I'm still getting it. I can't hear it. Gisela, I can't hear you. So are you guys, uh, let me get a few more people saying, yes, I can hear you or no, I cannot hear you before I continue. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm uh, back up. So I put the volume up a little if you couldn't hear me earlier than... Uh, hopefully I fix that. If not, send me another message and thanks for letting me know. Okay, so going back to the building rapport and the active listening, uh, again, one of the things that we're going to work on, we talked about active listening, we talked about showing concern. Understand the other point of view. Um, this requires a lot of patience. Uh, we don't want to make assumptions. It's very, very easy for all of us to make assumptions. I, you know, in, in my world of insurance contract negotiations, it's easy for me to assume that the insurance company just wants more money or the insurance company doesn't want to write the business for my client or what have you. And, and you have to try and step back from those assumptions because that's where you'll start your point of negotiations. Uh, recently, a very, very dear friend of mine, I was a mentor, I might even call him a a sometimes father, Ron Pellegrini, passed away. Uh, he'd been mentoring me in business for the better part of some 20 years, 25 years. Um, 
And when I would get to a point where maybe I had a negotiation coming up on a business, I would often go to him and say, here's what I'm thinking about doing. And he always responded with the exact same thing. Questions. It was always a lot of questions. Did you ask this? Did you ask that? When he was negotiating and he negotiated a ton of different business acquisitions, property acquisitions, all sorts of things over his lifetime. But what he did is he spent all his time and energy gathering the information. He was very patient and he was very methodical about gathering information. Um, actually, when I first began in this business 20 years ago, um, a few years after that, I had an opportunity to work with picking up another agency, actually, and assimilating them into mine. And so I went to, again, my mentor, Ron Pellegrini, and said, here's the offer I'm thinking about making. What do you think of it? And his response was, well, what do they want? What are they looking to get about? You know, what what sort of uh, deal are they looking for? Why are they, you know, again, more questions, more questions, none of which I had answers to. And of course, so he was saying, well, why are you making an offer? Why are you making all these assumptions? You don't even have all of the background information that you need to even have this negotiation. And again, so that come, goes back to what Jennifer said, active listening. I didn't have the answers because I wasn't actively listening to the person who was trying to do the sale. Um, the Buddhists, and you can see I, I go on a variety of different sources when I start looking at these sort of skills from the Greeks to the Buddhists to Ron Pellegrini to hostage negotiators. Uh, the Buddhist monks call this unknowing. Um, what that means is that they want us to suspend our understanding so we're able to be open to another one. Uh, and that's, again, part of the act of listening and part of just uh, having the, the patience to be open to understand the other points of view. And that's part of that successful negotiation. Second tip, and this one seems like it would be a pretty commonplace, but I will tell you that at least in my world, and I know from speaking with clients across the country, that in the healthcare world, it's definitely the same hurdles when it comes to this one. We wanna negotiate from a place of integrity. Uh, we are gonna have failed negotiations, all of us will. Uh, there will be negotiations with employers, employees, uh, third-party payers, hospitals, colleagues, whatever it might be, that are just going to fail. And so we should accept that from the get-go and understand that there's nothing and no one really that's worth straying from our values. Um, and this goes back to my initial comment about winning. Your goal is to reach an agreement. It's to encourage a discussion to reach an agreement. It's not to win. So you want to stick with your morals and your principles instead of, you know, at all, at all ends, I want to win this negotiation. This is another one that I, I get from Jennifer. And she said that when she's negotiating that she, and let's say it's a hostage situation, the big rule that she learned is never lie, ever. Never lie ever, no matter what, how tempting it might be, you never lie ever. Um, you risk losing all credibility, and that's particularly important if you're going to have a future negotiation. And, you know, this is, you can apply those active listening skills and ask your questions to build rapport, which, you know, we talked about in the earlier slides. And then you begin to establish that relationship. And those relationships are based on a, a level of, of trust. And you go through all those motions and one lie, even a small lie, undoes it all. You know, I've been working with some insurance companies and some clients for uh, over 15 years. And throughout those 15 years, I hope, I think I've developed some, some character and they've learned that I have integrity and, and that I'm honest in my dealings on both sides of things. And all it takes is for me to have one instance where I lie, even you know one of those lies by omissions that we like to call white lies, and I would basically undo all that hard work that I've spent so much time developing this reputation that I have. We touched on this recently. I was at a meeting uh, hosted by Medical Protective, one of the insurance companies that I work with. And we were in Scottsdale for a key agent meeting, which is a gathering of some of the top agents in the country. And the president of MedPro, Tim Kennessy, he shared a video and some quotes. So Medical Protective is the parent company is Berkshire Hathaway. And one of Tim's heroes and someone that we're all very familiar is the brilliant investor Warren Buffett. 
And here's what Mr. Buffett has to say about reputation and why he never lies. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and it takes about five minutes to ruin it. Uh, that's a famous quote of his, many of you recognize that. And we talked quite a bit about Warren Buffett and some of his philosophies and his strategies on uh, negotiating. And uh, he focuses very much on integrity. He actually talks about uh, Hiring, we talked, you know, he was talking about negotiating when you're hiring folks. And he listed three things, and I don't recall all three of them, but whatever the first, I think it was knowledge and something else. But the third one was integrity. And the comment was forget about the first two if you don't have the third, because he believes that strongly uh, on integrity and patience. He talked a lot about patience, like Ron Pellegrini. He said, uh, patience is sometimes what it takes. Reciprocity is. It's an interesting idea, concept uh, that again was shared with, with me by the hostage negotiator. Um, this is a fairly new thing that the FBI has included in their hostage negotiation training uh, for SWAT teams. Um, reciprocity. The idea is that you're going to give something with no expectation of getting anything in return. Uh, this helps to build rapport and it you know, ties into this whole concept of having integrity. Um, Jennifer said that in her world, that meant in the middle of negotiations, maybe you offered to give a bottle of water or some similar small token or gesture. You know, in my world, that might be giving on a contract term that doesn't harm my client, but it might be helpful to the insurance carrier. Um, in the medical practice world, maybe this could be giving a valued employee a paid afternoon, you know, just because. But Reciprocity is, is the con reciprocity is the concept that helps to build rapport and that encourages integrity and, and giving again for the purpose of just wanting to give, not because you're expecting something in return. Um, shared a few tips here quickly and briefly because we're already down to about 10 minutes left. Um, and I shared a few tips about the things to do for successful negotiations. Um, I want to share one that has to do with what you don't want to do. Um, and this one is you don't want to negotiate with terrorists. And the very first thing on this, and I, I'm asked this when I speak to live audiences a lot, like, well, how do you know if you're dealing with the terrorists, right? Other than obvious ones, and I'll give you an example in a moment. But you know that you're dealing with terrorists, and I use that word sort of you know broadly, but you know you're dealing with someone who's acting like a terrorist when there's any use of threats, or if they're attempting to intimidate or coerce you, you're dealing with a terrorist, whether it's your spouse, your boyfriend, your children, if they start using threats, you know, I'm not gonna pick up my clothes unless you give me back my cell phone. That's basically just threatening. There's no negotiating going on there. Um, you wanna walk away from any negotiation where you're dealing with terrorists. Um, I've done quite a bit of, training and, and listen to some speakers as I've developed my business skills over the years. I've been invited to do various you know, workshops and what have you. Um, one of the things I've learned is, or what I've been told in these workshops is that leaders need to be more personal. Um, and I guess I'm not as good at being more personal as some leaders might be. So, so today I'm gonna share a story with you uh, that I think is definitely very personal. And it also goes to this concept of not negotiating with terrorists because those times when you have to have the patience and the wisdom to walk away from negotiation uh, is a tough one. So the story goes back some 17 years now, I guess maybe 18 years, but roughly 17 years when my father, my real father, not Ron Pellegrini, uh, was kidnapped. And negotiations had become tense with the terrorist group that was holding him. But we were slowly trying to build some rapport. We were working with uh, a negotiator, a professional negotiator, who was helping us sort of establish the rules for interacting, like how do you ask for proof of life and what do we give them? And then they guess it was kind of this back and forth give and take over many, 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 many months. Um, but at one point, we were basically told by this group that they wanted a down payment on the ransom, so to speak. And it was a very difficult moment for the family because our professional negotiator basically said, 
this is the moment where you walk away. Well, difficult to walk away when it's your father, right? So, you know, your your urge is to want to keep negotiating, keep the the conversation going because that's your only link to trying to get to that final agreement. Um, but when you're dealing with a terrorist, it's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. You need to walk away at that moment because you're no longer negotiating. They're just dictating. Nobody's trying to reach an agreement. They're trying to just force you into, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to coerce us into doing. And that was a really tough thing to do. It's a tough thing for a daughter to walk away thinking this is a great, you know, opportunity to sort of level the playing field. Um, it did work out in the end. We did end up getting him back much later, but we did have to walk away for about two months. There was radio silence, so to speak, and that was a very, very tough thing to do and a tough lesson to learn. Um, and I still apply it in my daily life, even in business, that I don't negotiate with terrorists. Uh, I encourage you to do the same. Know when it's good to just walk away. And that, you know whether you're faced, obviously, not many of us are gonna be faced with real terrorists, um, but you might be faced with your boss who's acting like a terrorist. And so I'll drill that in again. We don't negotiate with terrorists and, uh, and that's why. Hopefully I, I'm getting a little better at being more personal. So I'm gonna recap here because we have about six minutes left and I'll leave a little time open for some questions, um, some questions that are coming in. Um, looks to see about the negotiations on, on terrorists. I think most wanna know how much ransom we paid, which I'm not allowed to disclose by the way. Um, so let's let's go with what the summary is on negotiation skills. Um, first one, active listening. Remember that listening is not agreeing. So you want to use those building rapport. You want to ask the questions of concern and um, talked a little bit about understanding the other person's point of view. So remember the Buddhist monks who say go to the place of unknowing because when you can sort of quiet your own mind and your own assumptions and your personal take on things, you leave room and space open to bring in somebody else's point of view. So that's the big one on, on active listening I'd encourage you to work on. And it's, a, and it's a tough one in our personal and our professional lives. And the place of integrity, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, the goal of a successful negotiation and the fact that negotiations are going to break down. There's times where you're just not going to successfully have a negotiation and it's important to maintain your integrity um, rather than the win at all costs approach that really isn't a successful negotiation anyway. And we talked a little bit about never lying, never lie ever. And uh, we don't want to, I think we talked about the Warren Buffett quote that you takes years and years to build a quality reputation, uh, showing your character and your honesty. Um, and it only takes a few minutes to to ruin that. So never lie ever, really follow. Uh, I didn't include this. I have a whole section on, on trying to follow through on what you say, which is part of this uh, negotiation that if you say something, do it. You know, it's a basic tenet we use here in the office all the time that do what you're going to say when you say, do what you're going to, sorry, it's do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And it seems like it would be pretty basic, but a lot of our clients are always so impressed when we say we're going to call back and actually do it, which I think is a bit of a sad statement. But um, And then the last one we talked about, no terrorists. So know when you're dealing with a terrorist. Know when uh, there's intimidation, there's threats, there's coercion, and know that that's not really negotiation and it's not going to be successful and you have to have the patience to step away or walk away and see if maybe you can restart negotiations at another time. I'm going to wrap up here today and also tell you what we have coming up on our next webinar. Uh, Sammy has us learning a bit about cyber hacking. It's a huge topic that's on everybody's minds these days uh, with all kinds of big corporations being hacked. Uh, but I have to tell you that healthcare is particularly impacted by cyber hacking and cyber terrorism, which is the new thing. And, and that's because the medical information that we all keep, that we all store and we interact with every day is far more valuable than say the credit card information that uh, Target might be uh, hacked for. And so we'll learn a lot about that. Sammy's got a great speaker in here that's gonna help you understand something about cyber and how best to protect your business. And then after cyber, the following webinar, we're going to touch on HIPAA and uh, sort of ties in with the cyber. But what is HIPAA and what do you need to do to comply with the HIPAA regulations? 
And that, hope everybody has a great remainder of their work week. And as always, you can email me any questions that you have.